If space is expanding, WTF is surrounding space for it to expand into. It doesn't expand into anything. Everything is just spreading apart. And what keeps it from spreading apart are sources of gravity, like stars and planets. Like, where is it all going into? What does this even mean? Put it simply, nobody knows. But maybe you'll be the astronomer that figures it out. From Shub Gotham 52 will AI replace lawyers? You probably don't want an AI lawyer anytime soon. A lawyer is not just simply a machine that knows what the law is. A lawyer is a person with, theoretically, years of expertise that uh, can help you strategically to achieve your goals. And that's not something that AI is well positioned to replace anytime soon. What I suspect is going to happen is that AI is going to make a lot of the drudgery of practice practicing law way easier, and it will allow lawyers to focus on the really value-add stuff and allow them to think strategically and to better represent their clients in the future. So I welcome our AI overlords. The next question comes from Hassan Babanji. Can light bend around corners? If yes or no, give one reason. Yes, light can bend around corners. In fact, that's why we have glass inside your glasses. When light goes into glass, it slows down slightly. Because it slows down, it deviates from a straight line. And that's why we have your glasses, telescopes, microscopes, because glass bends light. Also, gravity can bend light, as Einstein showed us, and we can actually see the bending of light as it goes around a galaxy. Then the next question is, can you bend light completely around an object so the object becomes invisible? And the answer is yes. It's well within the laws of physics that if you could govern the atomic structure of glass, then light would bend in a way such that it would completely go around an object so anything inside that object becomes invisible. One day we will build a metamaterial out of nanotechnology that will bend visible light so that anything inside that capsule will become invisible. Harry Potter, watch out. At Aegisalt asks, what happens when you travel faster than the speed of light? You can't. You can't travel f uh, faster than the speed of light. I'm sorry, you just can't. You see, as you get faster and faster, as you approach the speed of light, you have more energy. And in relativity, energy takes more work to accelerate. So you end up requiring an infinite amount of energy in order to travel faster than the speed of light. And so it's just forbidden. At Nino Clutch asks, Spider-Man is so raw. Maybe we should try that DNA biotech cross-chain splicing. Well, I'm not sure we're going to see Spider-Man anytime soon, but there is a lot of interest from biotech companies and academic labs to understand spider silk, which is five times stronger than steel. Spider silk is very biocompatible, very good for wound healing, especially for wounds of the eye and the brain. And there's been many efforts to engineer spider silk outside of spiders, to make it in a recombinant way, meaning not in spiders, but in other organisms like bacteria or plants. Probably the best known example of a recombinant protein is insulin. This has helped millions of people across the last four decades since the first insulin was produced in bacteria. Next question, what do you think? How will our future cities look like? A, B, or city? Any highly advanced city is gonna to need to make sure that there is an integration of green spaces, not only for our oxygen, but just for our enjoyment and well-being. The more that we get rid of our natural green spaces, the less we are able to have that oxygen naturally generated in our environment. I see that they're all high vertical structures. And that really speaks to the fact that we're gonna need to get more and more comfortable with building up because building out isn't gonna always be an option. At Pristine Martian asks, how far away is superhuman intelligence with a brain computer interface? Currently, we are fairly close to having brain computer interfaces really help a process called neuroplasticity in the brain. And neuroplasticity is the brain's normal process to learn and adapt to the outside world. I think that's something that we're going to likely see within the next several years. The idea of having a Bluetooth implant in the brain that helps you uh, Google something on the fly, we are talking decades upon decades before we would see something like that occurring. At 
SEO chase. Do you think robots will one day take over all of our jobs? The real benefit of robots is taking over the three Ds, the dull, dirty, and dangerous jobs that we probably don't want human beings to be doing anyway. People are working on underwater robots that can detect underwater landmines. Some people have worked on robots that can go into nuclear facilities after an accident and shut off different valves. But I do hope that robots are able to make people better at their jobs and free people up to do things that they're actually good at and that they actually want to do. Nick asks, will computer programming jobs be taken over by AI within the next five to 10 years? This is such a frequently asked question nowadays, and I don't think the answer will be yes. Um, and I think we've seen evidence of this already in that early on when people were creating websites, they were literally writing out code in a language called HTML by hand. But then of course, software came along, tools like Dreamweaver that you could download on your own computer that would generate some of that same code for you. More recently though, now you can just sign up for websites like Squarespace and Wix and others, whereby click, 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 and the website is generated for you. So I dare say certainly in some domains that AI is really just an evolution of that trend and it hasn't put humans out of business as much as it has made you and I much more productive. AI, I think, and the ability soon to be able to program with natural language is just gonna enhance what you and I can already do logically but much more mechanically. And I think too, it's worth considering that there's just so many bugs or mistakes in software in the world and there's so many features that humans wish existed in products present and future that are to do list, so to speak, is way longer than we'll ever have time to finish in our lifetimes. And so I think the prospect of having an artificial intelligence boost our productivity and work alongside us, so to speak, as we try to solve problems, is just gonna mean that you and I and the world together can solve so many more problems and move forward together at an even faster rate. At SmokeAway asks, what is the best case scenario for AI? Well, the reason I work on AI is because I think it could revolutionize science and technology, especially biological science. Biology is really complicated. You have something like 20,000 genes and they make something like 100,000 or a million different proteins. AI could help us make much better solutions for medicine. We have things like Alzheimer's. We've been working for 50 years. We don't have a good answer. AI could probably help us, if we had a better AI, help us figure out how the brain works. That would be awesome. AI could help us with climate change by helping us build better materials. Another case I think is elder care robots. So we're getting to a point where we have a lot more elderly people than young people. If we could have robots that are smart enough and trustworthy enough that they could really take care of the elderly people, I think that would be a big win. Last case is tutors. Of course, people are using ChatGPT as a tutor, but you could imagine really fantastic individualized tutoring once the systems understand the people who are learning better can help figure out like where are they having a problem. At Start Soul asks, how will the human species evolve? The future of our species is a big question and open to question, but we know a lot about human evolution from looking at the past. And the story of human evolution is really, in many ways, the story of brain size. And each time we've seen some increase in the capacity of our brains, Biologists and anthropologists have associated that with some change in human behavior that allowed us to gain more calories because brain tissue is what physiologists call metabolically expensive. It takes a lot of fuel to run a brain. As many as 20% of our daily calories go to fuel something that's only 2% of our body weight. So if you want a bigger brain, you're going to have to have more calories to run it. And we've seen that through time as our species has adopted new characteristics, new traits, new habits that have given us more to eat. Those things include tool use and social behaviors and cooking the food. So now we are at a period of time where food for many people is plentiful, calories are plentiful. One question for future biologists then will be, how did that change the human brain. At enterobang underscore two, will humanity ever leave the solar system? Uh, probably not, but some future species maybe, you know, humanity may evolve and change where we couldn't breed with ourselves. That species may leave the solar system. Not sure where they would go or what they'd do. We might send an instrument, a spacecraft to another star system. I could imagine that easily. We'd use a, a solar sail and we'd give it a push with a laser be cool. Bzzz, bzzz. Except it'd be in space, there wouldn't be any sound. It would just be 